wanna thank German engineering for creating such a beast. It's a hell of a hell of a job. Does the common sense work or you need to be super technician? What an absolute mission this was. I'm really satisfied. It's a bit better than I expected. It's absolutely mind blowing. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a X5 5OD in for turbo replacement plus chain at the same time. Uh, apparently this has been already diagnosed. It has a, one of the turbo issues, but to remove turbos, basically you're dropping down the whole engine, otherwise no chance. And uh, obviously whilst you're there, you might just do a chain in the same time. Uh, I'm not sure which of the turbos, because obviously this is 5OD, you got three turbos. Um, but it makes sense to refurb them or replace them, all three of them in the same time. You just don't want to repeat that because obviously it's a big labor intensive job. So uh, first things first, let's have a look under the bonnet and um, yeah, start with the engine removal. Well, it looks quite small in the first place, but this whole lump to, repo or to remove that, it's a hell of a job. So, um, as I said, it'll have to be engine removal. Um, let's take the cover off. And what do we see? Loads of actuators, each uh, basically for each turbo, plus uh, probably swear flap and uh, EGR, I'm not sure. So yeah, loads of vacuum pipes. Um, as you know, on the four ODs, uh, you got two turbos, and obviously probably one or two of actuators less, but they are very common somewhere splitting the vacuum pipe, and that's it, it's loss of power. And um, basically to trace that is a bit of a nightmare, but um, once you replace all of them, that's job done for the rest of the life, to be honest, with the silicon type. And... Um, yeah, it's basically N57D30C, I think, not 100% sure. Um, I think the block has extra holes for the turbos, and obviously that's an intercooler. It's, yeah, it's hell of a hell of a setup. But anyway, let's start, let's start removing, um, draining all the fluids and removing the whole, whole engine with the gearbox, because basically we're going to drop uh, with the subframe. Right, you can clearly tell there is something wrong. I already drained uh, oil and I would say it was below minimum 100%. And uh, well, this I've cleaned, but you can see clearly we got potentially also DPF is full of oil. Um, need to speak to the customer what he wants to do with that. It will burn out, let's say you put it back together and um, 
uh, obviously it's gonna smoke like hell in the beginning but eventually it will burn out but with time we're gonna clog up anyway so uh, we'll see what's the solution maybe take the DPF out, DPF out and map it uh, I tell you what so much water pipes so much of everything uh, but that's literally all seem to be disconnected all I gotta do is disconnect the the steering shaft and that's it the engine can go down let's go So the engine is finally out. Oh. I tell you what, a bit challenging. All because of all of these extra pipes and this and that. Yeah, look at this massive lump. Can you just imagine removing turbos in situ? Just literally no chance. This is the only way. Obviously, you drop it down, and you got plenty of access here and there, so all this needs to be removed and inspected. But as I said, we got a oil inside the DPF, so that's it. Get gutted and uh, remap replaced. Whatever, we'll come back to it. But we need to see what exactly going on with the turbos. Uh, just unbelievable engineering. So let's strip the turbos. Right, we took one of the turbos off already. So as you can see, uh, exhaust side is a bit wet. Um, not so much this side. Uh, just as you can see that, and there is no play whatsoever. So that turbo is 100% something with it. So I still need to obviously take this one off. Um, this is quite interesting. Um, well, the back turbo, which apparently is the only one which is water-cooled. Um, I did notice on the exhaust side there was a bit of a bit of a water sign. So I'm not sure if that's actually somewhere there is leaking. But um, I think customer didn't complain about the coolant loss, I'm not sure. Didn't mention nothing about that. But anyway, let's carry on. Right, what an absolute mission this was, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, in situ, literally no chance whatsoever. It's it's a mission. All this stuff, plus that stuff, this stuff, loads of pipes, wiring, you name it, all needs to go out of the way to get the turbos off. So. Uh, big turbo, middle one, and the small one. As you can see from the puddle, well, this I guess the small, the smallest one suffered the most. You got loads of play. Uh, in this one, you don't have a play. With well, this one, I can't really access. Either cold side or hot side needs to be taken off to check for the play. But assuming, because there is a bit of oil, so assuming that one's gone as well. This one, not so much, but. You don't want to come back to it, so you refill all of them in the same time. Otherwise, well, I guess up to two grand or whatever 
the labor or you will pay again but so yeah basically all of these three are now off and uh, we'll get sent for refurb uh, obviously they didn't do their job um, repl replace the internals all balanced and obviously wastegate uh, adjusted so uh, that'll be after a, well I guess they'll come back in a couple weeks so uh, yeah I'll see you three of you in a couple weeks right after a couple of weeks as you can see we got refurbed all three turbos uh, small one medium and large new timing chain kit loads of gaskets and bits and pieces and most importantly oil pump why oil pump because well you see in the oil um, it was a bit of a sludge but there was no metal particles to be safe i've decided to get a new oil pump because I've seen some horror stories before where you rebuild the engine but you use a old oil pump or or whatever after a month or so engine goes kaput again so this is very expensive expensive mistake so um, uh, this one was 420 pounds so it's better to spend a bit more and to be safe anyway now we're gonna strip this engine completely because obviously we're changing the timing chain uh, taking the intakes off and um, yeah uh, and then afterwards try to assemble everything back together will be a bit of a mission that let's start So the cover is off and as ex well to be honest I expected a slightly bit more sludge but as you can see if all of this would be all bright and shiny none of this would be uh, happening with regard, uh, regard with the turbos so um, so anyway and obviously don't see any slack on the chain but because you are that far you want to chain uh, you're going to change the chain as well in the same time before we proceed with the rest of the stripping um, we need to set up a first cylinder at the TDC here is the special hole we want to use this tool I'm not sure it's going to actually fit no, it does so um, like that And this one goes on the top, over there, like that. It's exactly the same as on the N47s as well. N57, N47s. On the B47s, it's slightly different. Same as on, I think, B57. But anyway, N47, N57, that tool is all the same and procedure is the same. So, yeah, now. Basically, we can proceed stripping down. I usually mark, because uh, I'll have to take the flywheel off. I'll mark it, mark somewhere there uh, for the TDC as well with the, with the marker. And then, just to be sure, when I put everything back, match. If that line matching the top as well, that means everything will be fine. Anyway, let's proceed with the stripping. So, removed all the covers, finally got access to the chain. For those who don't know N57s, chains at the back of the engine. So you got a front, back, gearbox, and so the rest. So yeah, this is, well, you, if you don't touch the turbos, still all right. Uh, obviously turbo sits there, so you don't need to touch them, but this all sort of work you have to do 
to access the chains. And wall pump chain basically from the crank to the high pressure pump and goes to the camshafts. This is the most common which having a slack on. These very very rarely I've seen these snap but this one usually either, either snapped or or uh, massive slack and um, yeah obviously also also seen uh, one of these guides fail as well and um, yeah that's about it to be honest uh, it's a bit better than I expected um, as you can see this is clean side but you can see wheel starts to build around the walls and um, some surprisingly is cleanish. Um, I've seen, trust me, a lot, lot worse. Uh, all these some walls are covered in sludge, so um, that's a good sign. But as I said, we're gonna change the wall pump regardless. Just don't want any comebacks. Um, enough of horror stories, and we're gonna clean these pipes as well. Um, what else, what else, what else, what else, and yeah, that's about it. We're gonna basically swap the chain first, rebuild everything back together, and then gonna focus on these three turbos. It's a hell of a hell of a job. So it's all now stripped, wheel pump is off, everything is off. We're obviously gonna start the brand new wheel pump. Loctite on the central bolt. Now we can assemble timing chain kit. Let's start with the side guide. And then we're doing uh, the chain itself, well, the first chain. Basically make sure the screw going to be in the middle. So when you're going to come to tighten it, it's not all the way to the end. So something like that. Righty, everything is back on. New chains. All the guides and everything, new oil pump, just need to put a pickup on. And now is the case of assembling everything back together, which obviously most of our challenge will be them turbos, but eventually we'll get there. It's finally done. It took me over over a day, I think. Uh, basically, I didn't film uh, when I put, was putting everything back together because it was backs and forwards, backs and forwards. Because, for example, when I was installing one part, oh no, this is supposed to go first, then I have to take it off. And 
that's why it took so long and I've never done these before but uh, we, if I will have to do another one it will be much much quicker and I mean everything comes with experience let's face it anyway I want to thank German engineering for creating such a beast over I would say even more than 10 years ago this three liter triple turbo wow if for example you do you delete all the emission stuffs for example EGR DPS cats and that do a stage two this thing could make up to 500 ish BHP and for economy or reliability I would say um, it's absolutely mind-blowing uh, it, it is all this thing it's just wow and you also um, need to admire that I think they also made a quad turbo version as well which is absolutely wow as well but I'm sure they discontinued uh, basically triple or quad turbo versions on uh, 3 litre D I did a bit of a research but correct me if I'm wrong anyway um, basically what I got to do is install a gearbox um, cat back on it although we did get the DPF out otherwise it would be mission impossible when it's in and I'm 100% sure if I wouldn't get the DPF out give it a month or so it would come up with DPF fault because it's full of oil and uh, I did experience that in the previously uh, so we're gonna do a stage one as well after after everything is finished and um, yeah and I do pray a God nothing's leaking in this area for example oil or blowing exhaust whatsoever otherwise the engine will come out again although I renewed all the copper washers gaskets you name it whatever had to be new it's all renewed everything double checked up to spec you name it I really hope nothing's gonna there is no surprises on that end uh, did clean the intake from carbon whatever as much as I could so yeah fingers crossed so uh, let's put this thing back in fingers crossed Hopefully I won't have to take it off again. Getting there to the startup. A bit nervous. Right, guys, moment of truth. This is gonna prove. Does the common sense work? Or you need to be super technician to fix the engine like these? Right. Been running for two, two, three minutes. Obviously, a bit smoky because there is still oil in the exhaust. But sounds good. Sounds good. Nothing's dripping on the floor apart from the coolant I spilled over. But the main, main, main thing is oil. Obviously, we're gonna lift it up and double check everything. But so far, so good. The main concern, there is no oil leak from the pipe, so I'm blowing the smoke. So far, so good. Uh, obviously, we've got a bit of an issue at the back. It's gonna smoke for a while, um, definitely. 
um, I just want it to burn a bit more until I go to take it, uh, take it for a test drive, otherwise no one's going to see the road when I, when I floor it. Right, stage one remap done. Uh, in theory we're supposed to have 420 bhp, not sure about the newtometers. Um, anyway, I've done 20, 20 something miles on it. So far so good. Um, yeah, we'll just, we also, when obviously you do the remap, we got this sports display. And uh, it's, if it's obviously over 400, uh, that arrow must be over there so let's let's just check it if that's that's what we're getting and let's go oh, 60 you can definitely feel the difference right folks I'm blessed I've just basically because we took um, we done a remap and we also deleted the AdBlue system. There is your AdBlue ECU which needs to be disconnected and that connector for the AdBlue pump. So this is your AdBlue tank, so it just sits there. But obviously to access that you need to take the splash splash guard off. But once you take the splash guard off, you can obviously inspect the turbos for any leaks whatsoever and everything seemed to be fine i've done 20 plus miles and uh, i can tell nothing too obvious so that's a very good sign and plus nothing's leaking this side as well no coolant whatsoever everything seemed to be fine so yeah guys i've done over 60 miles so far um what I've noticed, well, I knew it anyway. Uh, on a cold start, next day it did smoke uh, for about half a minute, but that'll be another thousand to two thousand miles present because oil and exhaust is very hard to burn out. I mean, it's gonna be a while till it completely clears out. Obviously, when you drive it now, there is no smokes whatsoever. You don't see it, but it it's definitely still there a bit and it's it's basically gonna go with time but apart from that i'm really satisfied i did uh, done a multiple test drives uh, previously i did notice there was a very tiny oil leak around the dipstick but turned out there was a slight damage on dipstick overing thank god it was easy to take it off and replace it uh, nothing on the turbo side everything seemed to be dry um, and nothing suspic suspicious whatsoever uh, so yeah i'm really really satisfied with it and drives completely fine no no uh, regards to remap we got plenty of power as i said 420 ish brake um, and we also obviously got got rid of the dpf and whatsoever doesn't smoke what well smokes because of slightly oil but as i said no uh, suit coming out of the exhaust uh, usual your you know let's say black smoke whatsoever none of that all seems to be smooth no warning lights on the dash so yeah i'm really really satisfied <sighs> one good job done in it anyway if you enjoyed this episode if you have any questions leave the comment below um, as i said i've never done m50d before uh, so this was a bit of experience and it went well uh, another experience thing in my pocket I would say um, so yeah if you have any M50D with smoking turbos send it my way I'll get it sorted um, but yeah in, in the beginning it was challenging because uh, you think what the hell is so much things to go but with experience it's 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 easy trust me on that uh, if I would do another one, probably will be much quicker. And uh, obviously, same as on E38s. I know every single nut and bolt because I've done so many. So 
every 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 experience matter if you enjoyed this episode you know what to do hit that like subscribe button <laughs> it's all good guys uh, i love you all and i'll see you in the next beamer episode